Hello, Rachel Mann here once again, and it's great to be back with you one final time as Christmas draws nigh and we enter the final few days of Advent. Uh, and uh, I'm going to be talking once again about my new book, Do Not Be Afraid, which is the Archbishop of York's Advent book for 2024. And in this short video, I'm going to invite us to reflect on two things, on how Jesus Christ himself waits and also on the power of waiting in dependence and the importance of receiving hospitality. Once again, this is going to be in two parts. The first part, uh, I will offer a reflection a prayer and some questions, and then that pattern will repeat in the second part. Jesus Christ is waiting. It's a line which will be familiar to very many people from the rather wonderful Wild Goose resource groups. Him, Jesus Christ, is waiting, waiting in the streets. The verse continues like this. No one is his neighbour, all alone he eats. Listen, Lord Jesus, I am lonely too. Make me friend or stranger, fit to wait on you. The thing about this hymn is, in a very startling way, it reminds me of those extraordinarily powerful words from Matthew 25 which remind us that when Jesus returns in glory, he shall bring judgment. Matthew 25 says this, Come you that are blessed by my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry and you gave me food. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger and you welcomed me. I was naked and you gave me clothing. I was sick and you took care of me. I was in prison and you visited me. And of course, the passage continues with the righteous asking our Lord, when did they do that? And he responds that just as you did it to one of the least of these who are members of my family, you did it to me. A very clear calling on our life to demonstrate our faith in action. I believe very strongly that Jesus Christ waits. He waits for us to see him and respond with mercy and love and grace. He waits for us to clothe him, to feed him, to provide nourishment and shelter for him. And it's very easy if we have quite a spiritualized faith to be puzzled by what that can mean, because we might want to say, well, our Lord rightly died, rose again and has ascended to sit at the right hand of the Father. How can we do that except, as Jesus reminds us, the face of Jesus stares out at us in neighbour and stranger, in friend and indeed in enemy. It is uh, unsurprising, I hope, when I tell you that there are many people who believe there is an epidemic of loneliness in our society. And I, I'm the first to admit that I've experienced loneliness and that was most acute perhaps during the pandemic when I was uh, living alone and I was shielded. But uh, a recent statistics, a recent poll conducted across 142 countries indicated that nearly 25% of people aged over 15 feel lonely. We live in a society, I think, which prioritises uh, independence and control. And, and yet we are called into community. I think that's part of the message of Jesus Christ. That's part of the invitation as we draw close to Christmas now to remember that we are called to be a community gathered around Jesus, the one who comes 
so vulnerably into our world as a, a babe in arms, in utter dependence. And yet our society seems to create these networks of loneliness, of desperate aloneness. And, and we can be in the midst of a crowd. Sometimes we can be in the midst of family and friends and feel lonely and separated and isolated. And there are times, you know, when I as a single person get really anxious about growing old because I want to be in control and I want to be independent because that's what society has formed me to be. And yet I'm terrified of losing that. This extraordinary song from the Iona community continues... Who will join my journey? I will guide their feet. Listen, Lord Jesus, let my fears be few. Walk one step before me, I will follow you. I believe Christ calls us not from places of safety, but from places of exposure and vulnerability. He calls us from there because he knows those places intimately. In the cry of a baby, and in a cry of agony from the cross. He calls us to step out of our comfort zones and our fears and allow ourselves to be exposed to the reality of God and his way, to be known and embraced in community, to not make a totem of our independence and our control and our power, he calls us to let go of our willful separateness and find ourselves in the generous, generous community of the body of Christ. Let us pray. O King of the world, you call the nations to the peace which surpasses understanding. You who fashioned us from dust and clay, come and shape us into your holy likeness. Amen. And some questions for consideration. How do you feel and react when you read or sing Jesus Christ is waiting, waiting in the streets? And do you think there's an epidemic of loneliness in our society? If so, what role can you or your church community play in addressing it? So at this point, you may wish to pause this video to give some deeper prayerful consideration to those questions and the previous meditation. I'm now going to move on to my second meditation, which develops this theme of dependence, of waiting in dependence, and, and maybe discovering the joy of hospitality. Now, I, I'm pretty much certain that you will have likely seen or attended a, a school nativity play uh, you perhaps even appeared in one when you were a child. Uh, they, they remain very resilient, although, of course, they've developed somewhat over time. And these days, goodness me, you can find all sorts of people gathered around the cradle of Christ, can't you? From Marvel superheroes um, to uh, Barbie, uh, any number of other iconic um, children's popular heroes. Uh, now, my favourite school nativity story uh, and it, it's not mine it's it's a bit of an old classic goes something like this and it, it's about the little boy who wants to play joseph but is given a much smaller part of innkeeper and he's really unhappy and incredibly jealous of the kid who's been given the role of joseph and on the night of the play joseph and mary turn up on cue at the inn and knock on the door and joseph says can we come in and rather than deliver his appointed line about there being no room, the disgruntled innkeeper replies, looking directly at Mary, you can, but he can't. One of the joys of the nativity narrative is that it's about hospitality. Indeed, the Bible makes hospitality, especially to outsiders, a, a fundamental ethical commitment of God's community. Leviticus 19.34 says, 
to Moses, God says to Moses and the people of God, the alien who resides with you shall be to you as the citizen among you. You shall love the alien as yourself, for you were aliens in the land of Egypt. And in the letter to the Hebrews in the New Testament, famously, we have, do not neglect to show hospitality to strangers, for by doing that, some have entertained angels unawares. And so the Holy Family come to Bethlehem in great vulnerability. They seemingly have nowhere to stay and, and they end up in a stable. And Jesus, the light of the world is laid in a makeshift, makeshift cradle, a manger. Now, of course, there is no mention of a stable in the gospel record. Um, there's no dialogue between the innkeeper and the Holy Family. And tradition is rather filled in the gaps. And, uh, you know, here's the thing as well. For me, I think it would be pretty inconceivable that Joseph, who hails from Bethlehem, would have no family who could put him up. But nonetheless, there's something exquisite about that Bethlehem scene and its vision of waiting independence. The Holy Family are in the hands of others. They wait and depend on the grace of those who grant them hospitality. Now, you may know this, but the, the word hospitality is derived from the, the Latin hospes. And that has implications not only of host and guest, but also of stranger, of one who comes seeking safety as a guest. Hospice is the root of words like hospice and hostel and hospital. And hospitals are by their very nature places of sanctuary. And in the Middle Ages, uh, hospitality, uh, ho hospitals were as much arms uh, houses for the needy and hostels for pilgrims as, as places of healing. Now, I, I don't find it comfortable to find myself independence. Uh, I have a chronic illness and it has a huge impact on me. And, and I've spent a lot of time in our great places of hospitality and sanctuary, i.e. hospitals. Uh, and without that urgent and tender care of nurses and doctors and, and the other staff, I wouldn't be here speaking now. And I know that's the story of countless others. And it's a time of appropriate dependence and vulnerability, but goodness me, nonetheless, I, I don't like it. I don't want it. There should be no better or safer place for a wounded or hurting person than a hospital. Now, in Christian terms, our places of safety and rest and healing and dependent weighted are grounded in another word derived from hospes. Host. Jesus Christ is the host who is the host of that great feast, Holy Communion. In, indeed, one of the words that is sometimes used for the bread we share is host. Christ makes a feast of hospitality of himself, knowing from the inside that, that human beings need places of safety where we can be dependent and vulnerable. And his church should be such a place, shouldn't it? Even if so often we fall short, it should be a hospital for the soul. And bless us at such times when we need blessing most and we need hospitality most. So here it is. I cannot tell you how glad I am that Jesus was born in a stable because my soul is so much like a stable. It's poor and in such a unsatisfactory condition. Yet I believe that if Jesus can be born in a stable in such vulnerability and dependence, he's calling to me not only to embrace my vulnerability and dependence, and find in hospitality a home. But I believe that he's saying, Rachel, you, all of us, 
I can be born in you. Let us pray. O oh God with us, bringer of joy and delight, come dwell with us soon. Save us, renew us, remake us according to your love. Amen. And some concluding questions for you to consider. Dorothy Day says, if Jesus can be born in a stable, maybe he can also be born in me. What do you make of that statement? What can Jesus reveal to us about living more graciously with vulnerability and dependence? And finally, in what ways could you or your church practice hospitality with more effectiveness? And may you and all those whom you love and you pray for, may those who you struggle to love, as well as those who you find easy to love, may we all, when it comes, know the riches of Christ's blessing on that glorious Christmas day. Amen. <laughs>